Hello, welcome to the Canyon Man Raj YouTube channel. I'm Roger, also known as Canyon Man Raj on my outdoor YouTube adventure videos. I'm not here for outdoor adventures today. Today I'm here for a different reason. Uh, this last year I was diagnosed with primary progressive multiple sclerosis. And this is my story. Multiple sclerosis, the monster inside me. Well, I am going to jump back to the beginning of my first experiences with multiple sclerosis. And that would be jumping back to the fall of 2011. Now, this is about the time that my younger sister, Chandra, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. This was all new to us at the time. Um, didn't know anything about it. Uh, it was a tough haul for her. Uh, she had a rare form of MS and she went uh, through some really super hard times and not even six months later, I think it was around April 30th of 2012, I was sitting by her bedside when she passed away and that was just a horrible thing to see and watch and it took a long time to get past that. Uh, so moving on ahead, uh, around April, around 2016 or so, now forgive me, I've written a lot of these notes down because with MS my memory is just not what it used to be. So this is going to be as genuine as it can be. Um, so around 2016, I did start having some dizzy spells and just not, just not feeling well. Um, I was having muscle spasms and just couldn't put up, uh, just couldn't figure out exactly what my issues were. Um, Working at the middle school, I started spending more time at the nurse's office. I had that, that uh, convenience that I could go in and speak to her. And uh, it was kind of crazy, you know, I, I felt like that, you know, after a while she was just thinking I was a hypochondriac. So I kind of quit bugging her, but I knew something was wrong. I just couldn't figure it out. Um, I never considered multiple sclerosis as even being an option with, with, my, uh, with my, my health. I made some visits to my primary care doctor and uh, she couldn't find anything wrong with me either. You know, I was thinking maybe fibromyalgia. Oh no, no, that, that's a woman's disease. You don't have that. I was digging, just trying to figure out anything, you know, what was wrong with me. I was hurting and just not feeling well. Um, so moving forward to February 12th, 2021, a little over a year ago, I took a hard fall at the school. In the morning, I was putting ice melt out on the uh, on the asphalt, so no one would slip and fall. Lo and behold, it was me that slipped and fell, and I tweaked my back pretty good. Uh, made a couple of visits to the ER, um, not the ER, but the urgent care, uh, complaining about some back pain and just not feeling good, and they took some x-rays. Uh, there was nothing wrong with me. Just kind of diagnosed with just a major back sprain. And so it, that was something that I had to deal with. So I was, I was back at work. Um, it wasn't too long after that, uh, the second week in March, that's when the big COVID thing hit. School was shut down. Uh, I spent a few weeks deep cleaning with my crew and that was tough uh, for me because I obviously just wasn't feeling well. And uh, during that time, I noticed I started get, getting some numbing in my feet, in my lower legs. And at times I was wondering if my feet were cold or if they were numb. As it turned out, my feet were numb. Um, I, yeah, by the middle of spring break, I was, you know, we, we released for spring break. We had a week off. And by the middle of spring break, that was like the first week in April, I really started getting numb over the weekend on a Friday. That last Friday before spring break, I, was, I woke up and I was numb from the chest down. It was strange, I still had more motor skills, but I just could not uh, feel anything, and it was the strangest feeling. And I thought, okay, well, I must have a pinched nerve, uh, something along that line. So I went a couple of days, uh, then on, uh, on Monday, that Monday I went back to see my, uh, my primary care doctor. Um, she uh, explained to me there was nothing that she could do and uh, go to the ER in a couple of days if I didn't have any improvement. And I was having not only numbness from the chest down, but you know I was having constipation problems, and um, it was I was really getting uncomfortable. Uh, so April eighth, I think it was a Wednesday, I went down to the Rust Medical Center and uh, the emergency room there. Um, 
they looked at me really closely. Uh, they weren't sure what was wrong with me. I had some MRIs of my back and my head, and I spent a lot of time there. It was all day long, and uh, you know, I probably went in about 11, 10, 30, 11 in the morning. Finally, about 8 o'clock at night, the attending ER doctor came in and started asking me questions about, um, you know, family issues, anything going on that maybe they should know about, and kind of came to mind at that point, well, my sister passed away from MS, and there were two doctors in there. They looked at each other, didn't say a word, they just turned around and walked out. And about that time, my, my, my heart sank down into my stomach, and I thought, oh boy, I just... I hope this is not what my problem is. I spent a lot of time in denial, thinking, oh, well, you know, my sister had MS, so um, the odds of me having it are way astronomical. Well, I was completely wrong, just the opposite. If a sibling has MS, your odds go up of having MS, and that was one of the things that I learned when I was in, in the hospital. And so they came back in to me and talked to me a little bit later and explained to me that, um, in the MRI brain scan, they discovered an anomaly in my brain, but they wouldn't explain further. Uh, their comment was, there was a vehicle waiting outside. They wanted to take me downtown to the press downtown, and their comment was, there's doctors and they have the facilities that can help me. And I kind of really started to panic and wanted to know what was going on. They really wouldn't elaborate. Just an anomaly in the brain, and they wanted to look at me a little bit closer. So um, I refused to jump in a car and go, or in the ambulance and go downtown. I, my truck was in the parking lot. I thought, no, um, you know, we agreed that if I went home and I could talk to my daughter, Melina was home, she was waiting for me, she knew what was going on, uh, that if I could go home and have her bring me back to the hospital, there would be no need to check out and then recheck back in. I could kind of skip all that big process, but that meant I had to go back to the hospital that night. So, uh, so I agreed. I agreed and I uh, came home. I got home probably about 12.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning. Uh, packed a bag, got my stuff together, and, and uh, Melina took me downtown to the Presbyterian emergency room. Well, not even the emergency room, just took me down to the, the front door. And that was such a strange experience because we were starting to experience the COVID issues at that time. And no one was allowed in the building. There were officers standing out in front controlling um, who goes in and out of the building. They were expecting me. So I went in the building. There were two nurses and a doctor there with a wheelchair uh, waiting for me to come in. And I thought, boy, this is they're giving me a lot of attention for just, you know, an anomaly in the, in the brain. Uh, so that also concerned me. And when I sat down in the wheelchair, they took off my shot or my shirt and, and hooked up a, a heart monitor to me and, and uh, checked my vitals while I was there before we even started moving. Uh, so this was quite an adjustment for me, trying to figure out exactly what my next step was going to be. Um, they took me up to the sixth floor at Presbyterian, which was the neurological and cardiology ward. And I noticed that sign when we got off the uh, elevator, and uh, that scared me. That really scared me. Uh, and I remember asking the nurse uh, if I was going to die there because I, I was that concerned. And she says, no, you're not gonna die here. We're gonna take care of you. Which, I don't know if that was comforting or if I thought she was just trying to comfort me. Um, but it was very, it was very uneasy uh, moment. Um, but they got me in my room, got me set up. And, you know, it was, I was frustrated. I'd been up all night. That's not where I wanted to be. And so I was waiting for the nurses to leave so I could use the restroom. The nurses walked out of the room, and as soon as I got up off my bed, I think every alarm on the floor went off, and uh, they came running in. Is everything is everything okay? And I told them, you know, turn that damn alarm off. I'm not dying. I got to use the restroom. I want to be able to get up and move around. So they agreed and um, and turned off the alarm. Uh, then the next day, they moved me into um, they do move me into a different room which would actually have probably the best view in the whole hospital. So that would have been, uh, geez, that would have been Thursday that I was in, in the new room. Uh, during that day, they came in and uh, I got a spinal tap. Um, that was very uncomfortable and I think I probably said some 
said some things that I probably shouldn't have said, and I know I apologized to the nurses for my bad languages, and uh, they, uh, they, they said that was no problem, that they understood my, the pain and the frustration of getting a, a spinal tap, because those things do hurt. So, moving on to the next day, that would be Friday. Um, this was the day both the neurologist and the neurosurgeon came in to see me. Um, it was, uh, I was very nervous for what the nurse or what the neurosurgeon and what the neurologist were going to have to tell me. And the neurologist was the first and um, after a short exam, you know, she, we had a short talk and um, she told me that I have multiple sclerosis. And the first thing I thought of was looking back to watching my sister pass away from multiple sclerosis. And I thought, man, that's going to be me. And it really scared me. Uh, my heart sank. And um, that, was, that was a rough couple moments. You've seen kind of a thing where people are talking, but you just go into a focused daze. And you know they're talking, but you don't hear anything that's being said to you. And after a few seconds, I came out of the days and, and they were still talking to me and talking about, you know, plans and what we're going to do uh, to step forward to try to take care of this awful disease. Um, she left the room and I was in shock. You know, I sat there, I was in shock. And about an hour later, the neurosurgeon came in to pay me a visit. And I really wasn't sure what he was there for. Well, he was there to talk about the anomaly in my brain. And the dark matter that was in the lower part of my skull in the back. Um, and he informed me that I have a tumor in my brain also. And man, I got the double whammy in one day. I thought I was going to fall out of my freaking chair. Uh, that really scared me even more than the multiple sclerosis. I mean, you hear brain tumor, you think you're going to... You know, you're going to be dead in a year, you know, and, and so that, that really scared me too. Um, he showed the tumor, uh, we looked at some, uh, at the MRI images, and, and he showed me the tumor growing in my head, um, and that explained the anomaly that the doctors were talking about, you know, a few days earlier. Um, the tumor, he explained, is uh, in a spot in the back of my head that's growing up against the part of my brain that affects my balance, my speech, and my vision. So if at times I stumble over my words or can't find the right words to say, I blame it on the brain tumor and I think that's probably where it's coming from. And this has been an issue I've been having for a few years. This is not something new. It just kind of explains um, the problems that I was having. Um, that was a crazy day. I was in shock. There was a lot to take in. I uh, didn't sleep much that night. It was uh, very, it was a very, that was a rough day. That will be a day I will never forget. So I didn't get much sleep that night. And uh, so Saturday became the time, time to go home. Uh, I got a hold of my daughter, Melina, and uh, they released me after they got some other results of tests that they took. Uh, she picked me up and uh, went home. It was nice to get back home. I was just, uh, you know, being in the hospital for four days, I could not have any visitors because of the COVID. Uh, the only visitors I had really was the lady who would bring me my meal, you know, three times a day, and the nurse that would come in and check my vital signs every three or four hours. And that was really the only, <laughs> the only communications I had with anybody. I talked on the phone and text, of course, but um, that, was a, that was a rough, four days that I will just just never forget. Um, it took a while, but um, I, I was, well, I'm gonna step back a little bit, uh, spend some time with the doc trying to figure out the meds that I was gonna take. It was determined that I was gonna take a drug, a heavyweight MS drug called Tecfidera, T-E-C-F-I-D-E-R-A. And uh, it took a couple of months to get myself through all the hoops that they wanted me to jump through with my insurance and Tecfidera was going to help me cover the cost of it because it was super expensive, around $10,000 for a month supply. So it's, that was not a, not a, not a cheap drug. Um, it took a while, but it finally showed up and I started taking it and man, did I, did I really feel like crap. Um, 
about that time, uh, I was able to go on my first camping trip of the year, which, which is up in the Hamas near the Bias Caldera, 10,000 feet. I went up with my buddies, Matt, Vicar of Play, um, James Blackburn, and uh, Rick Chicago. And so um, we had a good time. It was a nice trip. It was good to get away, get some stuff off my mind. And, and if you look, go back and look at my outdoor adventures, I'm an outdoor type of guy. I'm happiest outside sitting by a campfire, backpacking into the mountains. And that's where I'm the most comfortable. And so it was great. It was great to get back out. Um, managed to do a camp chat. That's another show that I have on my YouTube channel. And I explained a little bit kind of what I knew then of what was going on. Um, it was difficult. Um, second camping trip, went out with Terry and Matt, kind of back up to the same place. And that was later on in the summer. And that was a good trip. I'm still trying to adjust to the, the Tech Federa at that time. And, and I was back to work. I went back to work uh, beginning of May. And I was working, uh, trying to adjust to this Tech Federa drug. And it was just brutal. And I was sick all the time and uh, felt like I was a zombie. And it was just a brutal, uncomfortable, uncomfortable drug to take. Um, that second video, I managed to shoot a video of it, and the weather was nice, and we were there for three days. Did a three-day shoot, put that out, had a good time doing that. Just back to getting out, it was just, uh, that, that's where I need to be, is in the outdoors, and that's where I'm the most comfortable. Uh, trying to adjust to Tech Federa, continued on through the summer, and I'm trying to learn how to deal with the multiple sclerosis that's affected me, and also, this intracranial meningioma that I have in my head, which causes a lot of problems. And with the two combined, I had a hard time pinpointing what was causing what. So I'm dealing with two monsters in my head. You know, I look perfectly healthy on the outside, but on the inside, I'm a mess. I really am. Um, coming up on kind of to the next event, uh, Labor Day weekend came around, summer's over. Uh, went back out camping with my buddy Matt and Terry, and we went out to the Golden Greener Mesa. Did a couple of cooking videos, which I love to do. That was a great trip. Had a good time, but just before that trip started, I started having uh, nonstop headaches. Not super bad, but headaches that were enough to affect my everyday life. And I just wasn't feeling well. Did the camping trip, had a great time. Uh, came home on that Monday of, of uh, Labor Day, and uh, few more days, still wasn't feeling well, so the Thursday was back down at the ER and uh, had some more MRIs done of my head. Uh, there was another late night at the ER, about three o'clock in the morning, the attending physician comes in and she goes, you know, you have thrombosis of the brain and basically what that is, I have blood clots in the brain and the blood clots in the brain, we think were caused by my brain tumor. Now my brain tumor is in the back of my head and it's blocking the carotid artery back here which drains the blood out of your head. So I have blood flow issues in my head which, which causes um, major dizziness issues. Uh, uh, I can't even think of the right words now but it causes major problems and what my body has done is my body's grown blood vessels to go around this carotid artery so that I can drain the blood out of my head. So, you know, looking up and looking down, stooping down, and changing the blood flow in my head are recipes for a fall for me. So I have to be really careful uh, about what I do. So, uh, okay, I was getting off track a little bit here. So uh, the attending physician came in and, and she explained to me that, you know, that I had uh, thrombosis of the brain. And uh, that was another big scare. They wanted me to stay, stay the rest of the night and a couple more days so they can keep an eye on me. And I refused. I, I, was, I was done at the ER that night. Uh, it was a long night. I was frustrated. I was scared. I just needed to get home where I could be uh, comfortable. So at that point, I went home and started thinking about it. And I think I probably knew that that was the point where I probably was not going to be able to to go back to work and at that point, you know, after dealing with the public schools, I'd been there for 15 years and uh, loved my job, hated to leave. I loved dealing with the people that I had and even the 900 middle schoolers that I dealt with every day was not that bad. You know, I had a couple of projects at the school that I started, a board game club 
that we did on Wednesdays, and my thinking of that was getting kids off their phones and off the computers and sitting down and interacting and playing some board games and just having some plain old fun, you know. And so I started that probably six or seven years ago. And then about five or six years ago, I started another club called the Video Club. And that was uh, that was a tough project to start with. I had never done that before. I was making videos and putting them out on YouTube. But I'd never worked with kids and videos and trying to come up with new ideas and projects. And uh, after six years, we came up with some cool stuff. Right before uh, the COVID uh, stepped in and shut everything down, we managed to enter a project into the Desert Light Film Festival in southern New Mexico. And uh, the kids' project won an honorable mention, which in our eyes was a win for us. After five years, it was finally an opportunity for uh, our video club to get a little bit of recognition, uh, just not from the school, but from the district itself, because I never really had a whole lot of support from the district. All the cameras were mine, lights, microphones, tripods, uh, the computer for editing, the software was all me. And so never really got a whole lot of recognition for it, but I, I didn't do it for the recognition. I did it for working with the kids because I love doing that. And so uh, I just wanted to point that out. They managed to get a win. And I would, if they get a manage, or get a chance to see this video, I'd like to say hello to, to Ryan specifically. And there's some other kids out there. Don't feel like I left you out. But I wanted to say hello to Ryan. He was my main guy with the video club. And I uh, appreciated having him around. Um, at that point, I was forced to retire from the Rio Rancho Public Schools. And um, it was a big adjustment, a big adjustment for me. I've worked every day of my life for the last 41 or 42 years. And um, I had to figure out how, what to do with my time. I had a dog around here that kept me busy. And so um, just trying to figure out what to do with my time, trying to figure out my illness. Uh, in the meantime, I had a new appointment scheduled back with my neurosurgeon in October to talk about the blood clots that were affecting me. Um, we looked at the MRIs that were recently taken in uh, the beginning of September. And um, the doc talked about my blood clots and my tumor, explained more closely about the issues that I was dealing with. His recommendation was to get a second opinion and he referred me to, uh, this is Dr. Carlos Santos, neurosurgeon from Presbyterian Hospital here in Albuquerque. He referred me to uh, Dr. Carlson, who was the uh, neurosurgeon at uh, UNM Cancer Hospital. And even going that far, but kind of was another scare in me that I was gonna end up there. Uh, so at the end of the appointment, we walked away. One of the last things he told me is, whatever you do, do not hit your head, do not cut your head, it could kill you. And so that even opened my eyes even wider. It was, that was a crazy visit. Um, so uh, moving on, I uh, had a visit, a phone visit with the uh, neurosurgeon at the UNM Cancer Center. We had a talk and uh, the, the meningioenomas that I have are typically not fast growers. It's benign, which is good news. The placement of where it's at is my biggest issue. Um, they're not fast growers, so he wanted to wait a few months. We're going to take another MI probably here, MRI here in another month or two to see uh, how much the tumor has grown. Uh, at that point, a decision will be made to probably go under radiation treatment to try to shrink the tumor. That would probably be um, the next step uh, to that deal. Um, on, I think about three days before Christmas, it was about a week after I had that appointment with Dr. Carlson, I uh, was going to take the dog out uh, to do his thing. It was dark out, and I had stooped over to hook up his leash and his collar, and back to bending over caused serious vertigo, and looking up causes serious vertigo because the blood flows in my head. I stood up, and we walked out the front door, and that's the last thing I remember. I went straight and walked off my front porch, which is a three foot drop down to the concrete in the garage below. I fell, and if it, went, if it was not for a 44 gallon Rubbermaid trash can that, bounced, that I bounced off and kind of deflected my fall, that fall probably would have killed me. 
And that took me, I, I sat back and reflected on that a little bit, and I was so close to, uh, to, to ending it right there on that fall, and that really scared me. And so I've become a lot more aware of stooping down, looking up, how it affects my balance. And uh, I should have went to the ER that night. I had, a, I had a cut on my forehead here and a bruise, and I know I had a concussion, and I, being probably in shock, and the hard-headed hard -headed person that I am, I refused to go to the hospital that night. I probably should have. Uh, as it turned out, I'm, I'm okay, obviously, but that was, uh, that was another wake-up. That was another wake-up call for me. Uh, a week and a half after that or so, we managed to go on our winter camping trip, which is something we like to do. I haven't done it for a couple of years because the weather's been so crummy, but this year, the weather right after New Year's was beautiful. So we left here January 2nd, went down to a place called the Quebradas, which is the desert east of Socorro, New Mexico, probably about 15 miles east of Socorro. It was beautiful. The weather was nice for wintertime. It was in the 40s. Never got super cold at night, maybe down to 25, which is nothing for me. I mean, those of us with MS understand the overheating problems that we can have. So a lot of times the cooler air is, um, is, is nice. And so I slept like a baby those few nights that we were out there in the desert and uh, had a great time with my buddies, James and uh, Terry and Matt, my gaming buddies from the High Desert Gaming Society. We have a gaming club, board gaming club, and uh, me, Terry, and Matt have been running this club for over 26 years now. Every other week, get together, play board games, play poker. We're always doing something. And more recently, we've brought Dan Kaufman in and we've brought in our friend uh, James Blackburn in. And so we have a five person game club that we play every other Friday night and have a blast. And I really look forward to that. Seems how I don't do a whole lot anymore uh, because of the COVID, kind of just keeping to myself. Uh, the Tecvidera drug that I make uh, basically kills my immune system. I have no immune system, so I've got to be very careful about what I do, who I'm around, and uh, just the positions that I, situations that I put myself in. I think this is the first year ever in my life that I went the winter time without catching a cold or the flu. But working out of middle school with 900 kids, you're going to get those colds and flus. It's inevitable you're going to get them, but I think Back to this is the first time that I think I've gone without um, without a flu or without the flu or a cold, so that's been kind of nice. Um, I guess I can talk about kind of what's happening now. Uh, multiple sclerosis is a crazy is a crazy disease. Uh, I struggle every day. I have uh, vertigo. I have um, hot flashes. Uh, I certainly don't sleep well. Uh, I'm off balance all the time. Sometimes I don't know whether to blame the multiple sclerosis or the uh, meningioma in my head. I think I can blame both. The combination of the two is a double whammy. It's serious. I got serious, serious problems going on in my head. And, uh, and you know, I was taking Tech Federa, and when I had to retire, I lost my insurance. So I lost, uh, had a gap in my insurance, and so I was un unable to take Tech Federa for a while. They gave me a short. Uh, a short dosage for a couple of weeks. I took that, was not able to get a refill. So I went a couple weeks with it, a week without it, a couple weeks with it, and I can't do that. I can't stop and start taking Tecfidera off and on again. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill somebody or kill myself. It made me mean, made me a monster, made me a zombie. I, I can't be like that. I can't be mean to my daughter who's here to t help take care of me. I can't be mean to my animals because that's not who I am. So I made the I made the decision a couple weeks ago if, to stop taking the Tecfidera. So right now, currently, I'm not taking any multi, uh, multiple sclerosis medications. Uh, I am a medical cannabis user, and that that is huge for me because I tend to get really severe upset stomachs, and I think part of that is due to my um, my uh, meningioma tumor and where it's at can cause those kind of issues. So I've got a lot of things going on. Uh, right now, you know, I'm ready for spring. I'm ready to go camping. I got a camping trip planned in a couple weeks with uh, the game club, James, Terry, and Matt. Uh, we're gonna go down to a place called the Daddles. And I plan on doing some filming down there and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, be springtime by then. And I need to get out. I need to get out and um, get some campfire therapy 
or watch some caveman TV, which is also uh, a campfire. Those are the kind of things that are I, I kind of really need at this point. So um, what's happening now? I think I would like to um, carry on this show and maybe do a show every couple of weeks, talk about what I'm doing, how I'm feeling, the progression of my MS, what's going on with my brain tumor. Uh, I would like a little bit of feedback. Uh, this is a new show for me, uh, different genre completely. And I would like some feedback for people that are out there and happen to see this. Is, is this something you're interested in seeing me keep going? Uh, I show every week or every couple weeks, not super long, maybe five or ten minutes. Just talk about how I'm feeling, what's going on, what's going on with my MS, the brain tumor, my medications, uh, doctor's appointments, and those, and those kind of things. Um, so give me some feedback. Let me know if you'd like to uh, know more about this. Um, multiple, multiple sclerosis is a nasty disease. There are no two cases of multiple sclerosis that are alike. Simply because of the lesions that place themselves in the brain, lesions place themselves in the spinal cord, no two people have the same placement of lesions. Now I have several lesions in my brain and I have lesions in my spinal cord. I have a lesion at, at the neck level in my spinal cord. So whenever I do a lot of walking or I can look down, it brings complete numbness from my neck down. I can feel it tingling going down my, down my back and down to my legs. I have another lesion that's inside my spinal cord, right about the chest level. And that creates numbness from the waist or from the from the waist down, uh, not to the extreme that when I went into the hospital when I was completely numb. But I still have a lot of numbness. Um, I can lay in bed at night. Sometimes I won't even feel the covers on my legs because of the numbness. It's crazy. I, I there's a I could go on and on talking about um, different uh, issues that I have with MS. I'll be the first one to admit my memory is not what it used to be. Um, sometimes I have a hard time finding the right words to say. Uh, sometimes I completely, in the middle of a conversation, will forget where I'm going or what I'm talking about. And that is so frustrating. And uh, it's a good thing I have people around me that understand uh, what's going on and, and, um, and my frustrations with that. And so, you know, I, I kind of just take it with a grain of salt and say, well, don't mind, don't mind me, it's all in my head which it is, and you know, multiple sclerosis is not anything to joke about, but at this point in my life, I mean, what else, what else can I do? So, at this point, I would like to say, um, for resources, I think it's important that people with multiple sclerosis or have any questions about multiple sclerosis, reach out to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society org. And there they have a lot of resources. I have been there. I have a, I was assigned a caseworker, and his name is Chris. I don't know if Chris will ever see this, but he was a huge help. I spent probably an hour on the phone with him, uh, building my file and going over resources that are available to those of us who have MS. And I think one of the resources that I'm going to take uh, advantage is uh, of is uh, getting some railing on my front porch so I don't take another nasty fall like I had last time. Um, so that's kind of what's going on. Be sure and check out uh, nationalmultiplesclerosis.org. There's people there that can help you and um, I, I, I highly recommend it. So at this point, um, look forward to my next uh, video for sure coming from the Daddles. And maybe one a little bit sooner if people want to see what, continue to hear my story with and my struggle with uh, multiple sclerosis and my meningioma brain tumor. And once again, I want to say thank you for watching the Kenya Man Raj YouTube channel. If uh, this video was helpful to you uh, and you like the information, give me a thumbs up. If questions or comments, please leave them down below and uh, also leave me feedback on uh, whether you think I should continue this, uh, uh, this show on my battle with uh, the monster inside me, MS. Thank you for watching.